what are socially constructed entities? Like, what are they, metaphysically speaking? Let's find out. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago, I'm a philosophy professor in the UK. In the previous video, I was talking about social construction, socially constructed entities, things like money, disabled parking spaces, disability. In this video, I want to think a little bit more carefully about the metaphysical question. What is the metaphysics of socially constructed entities? Like, what are they? What makes them up? What gives them their identity? So in this video, we are going to get a bit heavier on the technical side of the metaphysics. If that sounds interesting to you, great, because I love this stuff. Give this video a big old thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get notifications. Okay, so when we're asking about the metaphysical nature of an entity, when we're asking, what is it, metaphysically speaking? What kind of question is that? What is it we're really trying to get an answer to? So let me give you an analogy. Suppose we're sitting in a chemistry class and the teacher says, what is water? And you go, oh, it's, it's you know, it's this kind of wet stuff that we, that we drink. That's true, but that's not the answer that the teacher wanted. It's the wrong kind of question. The question that the teacher was asking, given that we're in a chemistry class, is what's the chemical nature of water. What is water chemically speaking? Okay, H2O would be a good answer. Water molecules are mostly H2O molecules. So given that we're in a metaphysics classroom now, or kind of in my attic, and we're asking, well, what are objects metaphysically speaking? Okay, what does that mean? Well, we're trying to pin down what is the metaphysical makeup of whatever it is that we're talking about. Okay, so we might be talking, for instance, about people, as in persons. What makes a person? What makes a person the person they are rather than some other person? Is, is a person just a, a physical body? Is it, a, is it a mind? Is it a soul? Is it some kind of combination of these things? What makes the person the same person over time? Under what conditions would a person maybe cease to be that person? Would they be maybe a different person? Okay, uh, we can think about the mind. What makes the mind a mind? What makes it the very mind that it is? Is it just a brain? Is it something kind of completely non-physical? And so on and so on. When we're asking metaphysical questions, like what is a person? What is a mind? These are the kind of things that we're talking about, and those are the kind of answers we might give. Okay, so now that we're thinking about socially constructed entities, those are the kind of questions that we're going to be interested in when we're looking at their metaphysics, and those are the kind of answers that we might want to give in parallel. So let's just fix on a particular example from the last video, disabled parking spaces. So I talked quite a bit in the previous video about why you might think a disabled parking space, why it's being a disabled parking space is a matter of social construction, stuff that we do. Okay, so now that we're asking, what is it metaphysically speaking? We want to separate that kind of metaphysical question out from like the kind of causal or practical question of like, what is a disabled parking space? So you might give the answer, well, it's a, it's an area in a parking space that's been marked out by yellow hatching and maybe it's got a sign there saying disabled parking space. Okay, that's not the right kind of answer because that wasn't the question that I was asking. It wasn't like, how do I identify or how do I make a disabled parking space? What, what I'm thinking about is, what kind of thing in the world is it? Is it a physical thing? Is it a purely conceptual thing? Is it something else? And if so, what? Okay, so often the best way to get a good sense of what the question is really asking is to look at some potential answers. And then we get a feel for, you know, if they don't work, what might be a better kind of answer? Okay, so here's potential answer number one. Socially constructed entities are just physical entities. Every socially constructed entity is identical to some regular physical entity. So in the case of the disabled parking space, it is simply identical to that lump of tarmac and yellow markings and signs saying disabled parking space. That's what it is. So to understand 
what it is, we would have to have a theory of physical objects. One of those theories says that physical objects are just identical to a region of space-time. That's sometimes called supersubstantivalism. We don't really need to go into the details of all of that. I think it's enough just to identify socially constructed entities with physical entities, because already there we can start to see some problems. Okay, so we're going to focus on the view that the disabled parking space is nothing but the rectangle of tarmac plus the markings on it. Okay, the, the, the yellow paint hatched over it. Okay, what's wrong with that view? Well, let's do a thought experiment and let's imagine that the powers that be, I don't know if it's the government or the council, or whoever kind of controls disabled parking spaces, says oh, we're going to change how we do things. Um, we're now going to make disabled parking spaces. We're going to mark them out with bright green paint. OK, so forget all that yellow hatching stuff. Disabled parking spaces henceforth will be marked with a bright green square of paint. Once that rule comes into effect, let's suppose they miss out on repainting some of the old ones. So I'm looking at what used to be a disabled parking space and uh, they haven't repainted it yet. So it turns out I'm, I can now park in that one. So something has changed. Here's a, a space, a physical space that I couldn't park in previously, but now I can. So something has changed. In fact, we don't have a disabled parking space here anymore. But we've got the same physical space. Everything about it physically remains unchanged. It's the same size, the same shape. It's still got all those yellow paint markings on it. What's changed is the normative significance of those markings. It would have been wrong for me to park here previously, but under the new regime in this thought experiment, I can park here. So one way of really pushing home this objection is to say, well, look, the disabled parking space that was here now isn't here. It doesn't exist anymore, but the physical space remains unchanged. So if we've got one thing that carries on existing and another thing that ceases to exist, well, those things can't be the same thing. If they were the same thing and one of them ceases to exist, then the other, which is actually that very same thing, would also cease to exist, right? So the fact that we've got the physical space continuing to exist, but the disabled parking space no longer here, they were never one and the same thing. OK, so this kind of objection pushes us towards a view that says, well, whatever socially constructed entities like our disabled parking space are, they're not just physical entities. They are something over and above that. So what could they be? Here's a second potential answer. And it says, well, they're just concepts. They're just kind of conceptual activity. OK, so when an entity is socially constructed, it really just exists within our concepts. And this is something a lot of people say. But actually, if you think about it, it's a kind of a crazy idea because people can park in a disabled parking space, but you can't park in someone's concept. A disabled parking space has a certain size, right? Because we could debate how big should a disabled parking space be. You can't debate how big should somebody's concept be. OK, so look, being charitable to the people who say that um, socially constructed entities are just concepts, maybe they're not really talking about the, the metaphysics, the reality of the socially constructed entities. Maybe thinking about it more charitably, they're talking about what is the process of constructing a socially constructed entity. Well, that's got something to do with our concepts, right? Because if we didn't have the concepts going round, we wouldn't be able to socially construct these things in the first place. But remember, that's not the question we're asking here. I'm not asking how do we bring a disabled parking space into existence. I, I'm asking what kind of reality does it have once we've brought it into existence? Here's the kind of metaphysical view that I think works best for socially constructed entities. It's called the bundle theory. It says that a socially constructed entity is a bundle of properties. Properties are like the attributes that an entity has. So my properties include being a person, being a male, being British, being short, being white, that kind of stuff. Okay, bundle all those things together and that's me. Now, this view doesn't apply only to socially constructed entities. In fact, people who like this view, like me, use this as a view for entities across the board. So even non-socially constructed entities, objective physical stuff, you can treat those as bundles of properties. But I think it's a really nice view specifically for socially constructed entities as well. So let's just see why it's a good view. Well, if we look at the previous two views and the problems that they had, 
We saw on the first one that a socially constructed entity can't be just a physical thing. So we can't just have physical properties there. But it also can't be just a conceptual thing because they don't have any physical properties. But on the bundle view, we can include both kinds of properties. We can include, for instance, in the case of the disabled parking space, physical properties like its location, its size, its shape, etc., etc., but also conceptual properties like the kind of thoughts that our society has surrounding disability. We can also include the rules and regulations that the council and the government and etc., etc., etc. has about parking regulations and stuff like that. All of those things can get bundled into the bundle that is the metaphysics of the disabled parking space. And, you know, in theory, we could have bundles that include more or less of the balance between physical and conceptual and legal and societal properties. So when we look at the makeup of objects, we don't have to go, oh, it's a purely physical one or it's a conceptual one. We can have any kind of balance in between. And I think, you know, that kind of reflects the way that reality is. Some things are more objective than others. One of the metaphysical things that I really love about this bundle theory is that it allows you to have two objects in the same place at the same time. Now, to a lot of people, that sounds really, really weird. Like, how could you have two objects in the same place, like in exactly the same place at the same time? Surely if you put one object there, the other object can't also be there. But don't just think about purely physical objects, right? Don't try and like just put two chairs in the same place at the same time. Think about the case of a physical object and a socially constructed object, like the area of tarmac and the disabled parking space. They are literally in the same place at the same time. That's why we can talk about the shape and size of the parking space. Like, is this disabled parking space going to be big enough for all the disabled users? It's going to inherit the physical characteristics of the physical space that it that it coincides with. But they're different. They're different entities. We, we, we talk through this. One could cease to exist while the other continues to exist. In theory, there's a metaphysical puzzle there. Like, we've got these two objects. They seem to be in the same place at the same time. How could you possibly do that? Well, here's the explanation. Both kinds of entities are bundles of properties. That's their metaphysical explanation. But they've each got the same location properties in the bundle. That's why you've got two things, different bundles, but in the same place at the same time. OK, look, I absolutely love this stuff, so I could go on about it for ages. If you are interested in this kind of stuff, I'm going to post some reading in the description down below. Uh, I think I better wrap this up here. I hope you have enjoyed this stuff. If you have, give it a big old thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. They're always fun to interact with. Thank you so much for watching this far. I really appreciate it. I'm going to do one more follow-up video on social construction just because I found this topic so much fun. I'm going to keep the topic of that one under wraps for now. So you're going to have to check back. I hope you do. I hope to see you back here soon. <laughs>